a corallid. I think it's hemichorallium. It doesn't quite look knobby and thick like Paragorgia. But the, it, white, the, white, the, uh, the white is a sponge. Uh, a sponge. I think it's a type of eupectelid sponge or glass sponge. Uh, potentially Faraday. Is there any kind of symbiotic reason that they'd hang out together or they all hang out there because it's just a good spot? Yeah, I think it's just a good spot. Um, that they, they tend to hang off of the sides there to be completely vertical. Um, at least the sponge and those other, the anemone and that other coral. But yeah, if you can notice, yeah, the vertical sides of the rocks tend to be preferred than mm -hmm. the tops, yeah. I've noticed. Yeah. I think we, yeah, we can see the, the edge, the, the, the ledge always, yeah. the edge of the ledge. The edge of the ledge. Here we have one of those, another actinaria. What's um, this guy? Oh, it's a... An enemy. Yeah. Couldn't make that out. I always have a hard time with that word. An enemy. Uh, yeah, I, I have a hard too. time spelling that one. An <laughs> Unusual okay. color, isn't it? For the steps? Oh, the big, it's a big guy on the side. That? Yeah. And over there looks like a stalk being overgrown by some hydroids, potentially. Oh, look, two of them. <laughs> this is the interesting one for Three, me here, yeah. too. Another predator. Yeah. So, yeah. Dead stalks of sponges or corals are prime real estate in the you deep sea for uh, other couple organisms. Of like that Venus sure. fly trap. Yeah, uh, it is. A fly trap anemone. Um, and the name of the um, actinaria anemone that we saw earlier with the purple and pink colors is nobilis. Thanks, Veronica, for tuning in and um, pointing that out. That was not in my ID guide. That's just gorgeous. Never get to see down their throat. I always try. Say, ah. Oh. <laughs> now, do, does this anemone actually act like a flytrap and close, or it just looks like? Yeah, one? so I've seen them close up before. Um, yeah, if oh, we completely. if we touch them, they'll they'll close up. <laughs> wow, that's a good shot. That is great. Uh, I highlighted that. It's a nice angle. Taylor Ann, what does that uh, animal use for bait to lure fish or shrimp or little animals into its into its mouth? Does it use anything as bait? So unlike uh, anemones uh, that we're typically used to seeing in like fly trap plants, it, it actually won't lure anything into it. It will just use its uh, tentacles to grab meters, onto two, four, five. Um, detritus in the water column to feed. Um, so any of those large particles two, four, that you five. see falling here um, that have bits yeah. of organic yeah, we're material in, in it is what that organism right. will feed on. So you got something here. You got a yeah. You got a couple little bits to hit. All right there. I'm coming up a bit. Cup it. Coming uh, right across in front of you. My yeah. own dust cloud. Dramatic. Yeah, I, I yeah. would aim for that little Smoke right by machine. the right by the tail end of the vessel. There, there's a, an area of some relief there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Headed that way. Who made all this dust? It's possible. And then this is ultimately where we're going for, Dan, right here. All right. So, just so you have a general idea of the direction. And this fly through the dust cloud here. Right into the rock on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> it's never happened before. <laughs> no. <laughs> Couldn't possibly. Hope if I would turn these disruptor lights off. Huh. A cross between a octopus and a sea cucumber, or one very <laughs> chubby sea cucumber. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. 
It is a very it's on the move now. Yeah, I think it is a sea cucumber. Yeah. Palipatides, maybe? Well. What is it eating? My uh, thrusters have oh, it's disturbed a, it. Yeah. I wonder if these are just like depressions in the sediment. Uh, what, we're some, what we were seeing. It doesn't, because there, you can see that. There's some rocks is up there? here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. There they are. Like our dust cloud is just catching up to us in the canyon there. Okay. Oh. We got a shout out to Rye in the chat. From who? <laughs> uh, it doesn't say. It just says, hi, Rye. You got this. It was uh, from five minutes ago, but I couldn't say it because uh, we're doing a little bit of filming back here. Hi, Grandma, probably. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Rye's Grandma. She's doing excellent up here. She's definitely got it. First, I heard no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and thanks so to the SCF for reaching out. <laughs> that wouldn't be possible. Somebody commented that it looked like the monster from Little Shop of Horrors a little while ago. Totally. Um, and somebody named it Chonky Cucumber, that little guy that we just saw. So, yeah, I'm looking at the uh, close up Norbit data. And it looks like some of these little impressions are scours from around little rocks. Oh, yeah. So that's why they look kind of funny, right? They don't look super pronounced. Yeah. Some little associates there. Yeah. Typical. I'm not going to be able to. Uh, I can't uh, double sweep this for photogrammetry because I go one way and uh, that's it. Uh, dust. Uh, if I go back the other way, it'll be pig pen dust action. I could try, but I don't think so. I can see in my aft cameras a giant dust cloud following me. Just from the displacement of the water that Hercules moves out of the way and then back, it creates a bit of a dust cloud. We have a question about how fast do sea cucumbers move? Sorry? How, are, how oh. fast do sea cucumbers move? Well, fast enough to mess up any photogrammetry that I'm trying to do, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know there's a couple of species of sea cucumber. One is called the headless chicken monster, actually. You should look it up on our YouTube um, oh, if you haven't seen it. I'm just, I'm gonna Google uh, it. Kind of wibble wobble through the, uh, through the air, or I'm sorry, through the water. Um, very cool little guys, and I'm not sure about the motility of your, I don't want to say they're bog standard purple cucumbers, but <laughs> I think that uh, it is one of the most commonly cited uh, identifiable cukes. I can see why you love them. Oh, what? <laughs> the old cucumbers. Oh yeah, but well, definitely <laughs> if you're if you're online, I I highly recommend that you look up headless chicken monster Nautilus live. Saw a couple of really cool ones last year. Um, I believe uh, IFLS described it as a transparent bag of Cheetos floating through the water. So. It's a, uh, yeah, we actually did see some on this expedition. Uh, I think our first few dives at the columnar basalts. Um, yeah, and they're, I think they're quite beautiful. Their name doesn't reflect uh, how they look fully. Um, but yeah, not all sea cucumbers have that ability to kind of swim or fly around the way that those sea cucumbers they're do. They're a really cool color. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. Um, their scientific name is Anipniastes, um, but yeah, headless chicken monster is much more fun to say. 
<laughs> kind of like moose fish. <laughs> yeah. All right, can you just strafe the gauges for me? But most sea cucumbers will use uh, little tube feet mm, good, that good. they good expel and water good. through to move okay, around okay. and crawl around yes, the seafloor. Similar to sea stars, which are also in kinoderm, oh, well, so the phylum in kinodermata. So back to that question earlier, talking about how we group these organisms together. They are in the same phylum, um, but they're not quite the same, but they have similar features. Yeah, and somebody uh, was commenting a while ago, but I, I couldn't mention it because we were kind of, I think it was when we were trying to fix the tether, um, that uh, it's like a family tree. And that's, that's what I tell my students, right? You go back on the family tree and you can find common ancestors. Mm -hmm. So that, and yeah, I, exactly. we, we were talking about it I, with somebody, I think maybe Manal or, and I think you were, we were talking about how that uh, picture of evolution going in a straight line, you know, is, is very... Uh, misleading, yeah. Yeah, misleading, three, and it's, it's more of a tree. Three, zero, two, four, five. This is a Aldrovandia halosauridae um, fish. Ooh. Show for that seabed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> bonk. Hopefully it was soft sediment. <laughs> Just, should I put that as a highlight? Fish bonk. <laughs> Just have a glance at the tether there for me and make sure it's uh, still happy before I stretch it out here. You can turn your head away a little. To I, I think it's remarkably cool how the Norbit picks up each one of these rocks, yeah. basically. Yeah, these are pretty small targets, right? E exactly. No, this it's very impressive. Uh, yeah, and that was yeah, a that was a 35 meter uh, altitude yeah. survey. So no, I, no, I don't think it. Uh, I think the smallest ones we're not seeing, but we're certainly seeing the cluster of rocks here. And yeah, that, and that, beauty. That it's the one at the top that usually gets the. Yeah. Okay. Happy. Happy. Thank you. Oh, there's a jellyfish. Look like in the uh, Atlantic cam. They always move so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't know what I'm talking about, so it could have been something else. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It was a jellyfish. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, yeah, moved so fast I couldn't even see what color it was. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Norbit Challenge. You're going to pick the smallest depression. I like that one right there. I like that one right there. All right, let's see. <laughs> Norbit Challenge mode. <laughs> uh, it should be to my left, according to Norbit. Right. Yeah, let me do a DVL reset so you're in the... Exactly. Right right. Place. Yeah. And somebody's saying that it's similar right in the ahead. way that uh, that they move mechanically so it looks with the hydraulics. There's a little height there and a little dip there. So. Yeah, that's a really good analogy. I mean, there's something there. No way. Tell me, Norbit picked out that rock. I don't think. I don't know. <laughs> I'm. Well, I'm wondering if it created. I'm wondering if it created a uh, a scour that we're seeing. So as you go yeah. over it. Oh no! There's something off to your right. See. Huh? Oh, look at me! My Norbit can make little tiny rocks out there. <laughs> Astounding resolution. Chris has this little button that says, make a rock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time he passes over something, it just data magically appears on Yeah, there's, orbit. I mean, if you look over here, there's something. Sorry, Ray, Off I came a little higher there. No, it's good. I can come up uh, if you what want. Do you Off to the right. Uh, that's quite a ways off to the right, though. Yeah, that is. That might be this one. Yeah. I think it's picking up the... That or the little scours there off to the I right. Bet there, I oh. bet that thing is making a little bit of a scour around it. Yeah. So I doubt it's seeing the rock, but it does scour the seabed around. I'm trying to see if I can pick it up in this, but I don't really see it. Just for scale, uh, using a multi-beam sonar, we can watch a diver walk by in front of the vehicle. Uh, we can see his arm swinging, and we can see the tool that he's holding in his hand, tell if it's a pipe wrench or a crescent wrench. It looks like Devin saw something uh, really cool when she was on the monkey deck. She saw a manta ray. 
Oh. Yeah. So she sent a a picture. I have That's no cool. idea what the white thing oh there is. Gosh. Yeah, is that carbonate or pumice? Mm -hmm. Phosphorus. Is it? No. Well, no, I mean, I, I think... Um, is it, just zoom, if you can zoom in, zoom in quick. Zoom in on it? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Video. Copy. You can zoom in. A piece, of, a piece of carbonate or something of some sort. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, thanks. You can go away. Mm -hmm. A couple of, uh, maybe a year ago on an expedition. Three inch reach now. One four meter, or one right five right. meters, uh, two, four, five. About a year ago on an expedition, we were traveling through some very dark rock like this, and a bright white rock appeared out of the landscape, and they called it in the log, unidentified white object and sampled it. Bright white, completely wow. not anything that was there. Wow. And it was later sampled, and I think they, they saw two or three of them across it in this one patch. And it was later sampled and uh, identified as a giant chunk of phosphorus. And where, wow. where was this? Um, I think it was Papa Hanau, Makuakea last year, or something like that. Phosphorite. Fo no, what? So, Later, and I, 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 I forgive me for not remembering who did the research on this, but um, it was found that a guano trader ship, a guano merchant, had gone around, gone down somewhere in that that's area. That's right. That's right. Yeah, dropping it. Wow. Yep. So yeah. potentially that that was because guano is is uh, was mined for its its phosphor content. Yeah, if you can zoom in on those little flat rocks behind the big one. Oh, sure. even more. Thank you. Yeah, every once in a while, things like ballast stones from ships greatly oh. confuse <laughs> the geologists because they're so out of place. Yeah. Until, until, until you, often it's, well, we can't explain it, so it must have been a ballast. A ballast stone from a ship. Come up a bit before I get over you. Yeah. Well, kind of like what can we saw in, you can, uh, in Egypt in with there. those improvised weights. Yeah. Here's an example of landing on an unstable surface. Yeah. Zoom in a bit more for us. Yeah. Yeah. So somewhere there must be in the sidewall. I'll crop a, some carbonate. Uh, right, Grandma says that the sea cucumbers don't have a brain. And have you ever heard of a chocolate cucumber? Chocolate chip cucumber. I have not. <laughs> I love Rai's Grandma. <laughs> Wait, Rai's Grandma's on? Yes. I love this. She's, she's, very she's been on okay, every day. Wide, please. <laughs> she just barely started writing in. Right, Rai? Mm -hmm. yeah. Through the power of telepresence, we're connecting families. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Rice Grandma, I, I think I think so much your granddaughter out here. She has done so great helping me get this camera system up and ready each morning. And we have a viewer that uh, remembers those white rocks, and uh, they're saying it was two years ago. That's uh, Very where odd I just pushed a bit off there, there. Oh, cool. The odd and out of place. Uh, yeah. Discoloration there? Yep. Yeah. I don't know if you're interested. What's yep, no, under no. the. I've got something creeping up in my sonar there. Yeah, I'm getting yeah, you stopped. That cliff is on the way up. Can I right start okay. coming? Oh, up? Let me move this over so you can. Yeah, see? There, that cliff. <laughs> I'm going to start coming up. Yeah, I don't. I We're going to stop at the base of it, so I'm getting you, I'm getting you wrangled. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, it'll, it'll have a couple of steps to it. Yeah, this first step is the one we want to take a look at. Right so we're looking to go like right to this outcrop here. Cover. So that wasn't as painful a transit as I thought. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually it's nice to have that guidance of the boulders. Oh no. <laughs> oh sorry, that wasn't for SBO. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry guys. No, I swear that wasn't us. <laughs> that was uh the starboard camera imploding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tink.
Uh, We've been there and got that T-shirt, eh, Jonathan? Oh, yeah, yeah. We got two or three T-shirts out of that deal. Uh, it is true. Lots of revisits to a certain site. Here it is. Here we are. Ah. Uh. We've made it. We've made it. Uh, we made it to the base. Incredible. Yay. Rocks. Starting. <laughs> I'm starting my time lapse now. Right. Capture this and. Oh, oh, wow. I, I, you might want to hold on. Roger. <laughs> it's much more exciting to do. It's uh, yeah. bigger of a little rock. Yeah. It's just well, a little just step. A little, little step. It's just a little. Uh, I'm stopping my time lapse <laughs> now. <laughs> 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 Well, uh, this, you know, this making decisions. Truly Those rocks right a, there were very fascinating, Jonathan. There's a lot of uh, For the input into <laughs> and good <laughs> advice. Ooh, more unidentified white rocks. You can, uh, I, I, I might be tempted to leave it on because yeah, it might be rather. Look at that. It's cascading. Here, what oh, look at that Ooh, look at the rock that's appearing in um, the white field. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's like a big similar chunk. to the chunk we saw Might be yeah. some, yesterday. Uh, dramatic but looking steps here. It's so. A little more, yeah, obviously more broken down. It's a big uh, chunk like it of it breaks there, up though. a little bit there, as Norbit suggests. So we're all right. Good. Yeah, so what that's where that white stuff is that? coming from. What? Wow. What is it? Yeah. That's incredible. So with that carbon that's where it's coming from. Carbon what? Carbon? Yeah, what like causes this kind of formation? I don't know. Can you do a little bit of a photogrammetry wiggle wobble over this, please? Sure. I'm super interested to model this. Wiggle wobble or wiggle wobble. Wobble baby, wobble baby. <laughs> as long as Chris we, keeps we the boat saw, moving. We saw some of this you in, early, yeah. in earlier yeah. dives. Yeah, yeah you keep moving. Where same. do you want to go? We want to hit the cliff there. Closer? Uh, or gonna, up and long? We're going to come up here, right? Oh, okay. Or, I, uh, do we, I don't know, whatever the plan is. Do we want to hang out on this cliff, or do we want to go to the mega cliff? Mega cliff, but above my pay grade. I mean, we're going to get to the mega cliff, but I don't know if we want to spend a little time at this one and look around. Um, I'm I'm fine with with. Uh, I'll just do a quick sweep left and yeah, right. Yeah, quick quick right, sweep and then right uh, and left. Yeah, May, yeah, maybe an edge sweep like that, sir. Roger. I'm seeing the peak. So the I can't tell if this is these camera. are ash ash deposits or. Oh, sir. Oh. I never thought I'd get used to operating an ROV with a 180 camera. Now I'm not sure how oh, I'm ever going to live without it. Nah. It, it, it is just awesome. <laughs> yeah, I can see like above the vehicle. Up, up, down, left, right. Totally. I guess it's because it's an ancillary camera. You know, it's not the main camera, but I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can also smell cookies. Oh, oh man. <laughs> cookies have arrived. John, you are a scholar and a gentleman. Thank you. Don't crash. Yeah, watch the wall. Oh, oh, yeah. Watch out for the wall. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, I like this. It's like the exact wrong moment. <laughs> Ooh. Come on, it doesn't what, move that Was that right? That that that? Thanks. <laughs> look, look at this boulder sitting on top of that. <sighs> <laughs> oh, thank you. The dust cloud was an emergency. Pull up, pull up. Yeah. <laughs> Proximity alert. We need. I don't. Why do we not have sci-fi sounds in this control van? I still haven't figured that out. We've talked like every, about it. Like every every button years. needs to beep and boop when you press it, and yeah. I think you need computerized you voices. Ice cream sandwich a few days I think ago. That would I am abused. totally like for that. We should have like a womp womp sound, you know, when. Like. And we'll get too rowdy back here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Larry was mentioning, pointing out this, the ice cream sandwiches we were seeing the other day. The the middle portions looking similar to what we're seeing here, where it was sandwiched in between the basalts. 
Uh, you see there is a basalt above this, or at least basalt rubble at least. Let's see if it goes into a whole a whole formation of basalt. There we go. I'm going to turn off the down lights here because I've stuffed it a little bit there to the left. I think these <laughs> cookies are still warm. <laughs> yeah, thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, Chef. <laughs> Okay, do we want to back and forth more here, or do we want to go up, ups and down? Dan wants to get to the big cliff. Yeah, I think I think we can cross over and get to the okay. get right to the big cliff. Coming up. Aim for a rock or two on the way. Is the I'm gonna try putting in. Now that we're all settled out, I'm gonna just try to do this in one move. I'll keep an eye on things, but I, do that. I think that might actually be a little more precise. I like this overhangy looking thing here in that sharp relief, if that's surreal. Yeah. I'm headed, yeah, I'm headed like, I'm going to put Atalanta like right there. Right there. Bridge, bridge now, four zero meters, two, four, five. Affirmative. got a question for the group from a friend in Texas who's uh, watching online and, and texted me and said, uh, since the sea cucumbers are in salt water, why are they not called sea pickles? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Which is pretty clever. <laughs> I'm sure they would taste pretty pickled -y. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty sour. Oh, I bet they would. I think it's pretty people, awful. Some people do eat sea cucumbers. I'm not sure about deep sea ones, but I know shallow water sea cucumbers are um, considered a delicacy in some places. Really? And yeah, Daniela was saying that um, they fish for for sea cucumbers, but the market there's not really a market for it in the U.S. I imagine. How, how do they prepare them? I wonder. That's a good question. That's, um, that's interesting. We had uh, somebody a few minutes ago commenting that they weren't sure who was um, making fun of, you know, who, and uh, I thought it'd be good for us to introduce ourselves. Is that okay? No. All right, so hi, I am Alejandra Martinez. I am the current science communication fellow on watch. I teach seventh grade science in Eagle Pass, Texas at Memorial Junior High. Larry? I'm, I'm Larry Mayer. I'm the watch leader on this watch and uh, I'm also the director of the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping at the University of New Hampshire. Taylor Ann? Hello, I'm Taylor Ann. I am the science manager and data logger on this watch, I'm logging all observations that we're seeing here, including uh, Jonathan's photogrammetry and immersive, immersive filming. Um, when I'm not here on the Nautilus, I am a research assistant at UCLA in the uh, Department of Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences. And I'm a master's student at Cal State Northridge, uh, researching microplastic pollution in the, in the deep sea. Pass it on up to Chris. Hey, uh, I'm Chris Krasnowski. I'm here as a navigator and uh, high resolution mapper. I'm Dan, sitting in the hurt chair. I'm Rye, and I'm sitting in the Atalanta chair. And I'm an ROV intern on this trip. And when I'm not here, I'm normally working at Ocean Networks Canada. My name is Manel. I am the uh, video engineering intern, uh, and I am from Silver Spring, Maryland, and uh, I'm a science communicator, filmmaker, and photographer out there. And, and my name is John Culberson. I represented West Houston in the Congress and the state legislature uh, for many years. I had the privilege of, of uh, chairing the Committee on, on Commerce, Justice, Science, so I worked very closely with NOAA, with NASA, in funding space exploration, ocean exploration, and working closely with Bob Ballard over these many years to help uh, help this uh, it's just, this amazing ship and, and all the work that they are, are doing. Uh, I'll be a, I've been a privilege to be a part of it, and I also now serve on the board of the Ocean Exploration Trust with Larry. I'm going to uh, come under you there while we're waiting for the ship to move. 
Atalanta really doesn't want to get moving, huh? No, well, sometimes you got to kick it in the guts to get it All to right. go. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna sweep the ridge here while we're waiting. Give us another shot of the cheesecake. Uh, you'll probably have to come up as I come under you. So we're back down on that first step there, Larry. Oh, so yep. Atlanta's being. No, I, I, I see where you are. Uh, naughty yeah. child and refusing to obey. What do you do, pull harder? <laughs> um, just kind of let it do its thing. Yeah, this was uh, when we worked, I said, in the old days with the deep toe, which we actually put the, the important instrument just at the end of a wire. There was lots and lots of study of what the wire is actually doing. It doesn't necessarily go straight down. It, no. It spirals and... All kinds of strange things. Uh, this is my uh, my uh, dust cloud from before here. Sorry. It's going to come straight up there and acquire that uh, boulder above me. Yep, we've seen that boulder before. Yeah, a little too close. And so the, the, the cable also has a uh, catenary, uh, a large arch to it, too. So it's no nothing straightforward about what you do with the vessel to make something at the end of it. Yeah, one of the Robos kids has his masters in uh, cable dynamics. Mechanical engineer that wrote code uh, to predict how a cable yeah. would uh, yeah, there was a professor at Scripps when I was there, and it was a very, very long time ago, who, you know, when first days of computer coding, tr tried to write a code to model the dynamics of the cable. I remember, he, call he called the program TOAD, T-O-A-D. Yeah. Um, but we just really didn't know enough, and so uh, we actually did an experiment where um, two divers moved behind the vessel with scooters as the, <laughs> as the vessel was towing at, a, at about a knot and a half with huh. 8,000 meters of cable out and at about 100 feet connected two tiny accelerometers to the cable. They actually had to put them around the cable and recorded because this is in the days of it, you, you, you couldn't do things internally. They actually uh, recorded the, the vibrations of the cable uh -huh. um, in the nose cone of one of the scooters where the light had been removed, they put the recording equipment in there. And so that was important input to that program to understand what the, the actual vibrations of the of the cable were. Yeah, we did a similar thing with the robust system in the early days, the free flyer. We had a bunch of the floats, umbilical floats for the catenary modified and put USB home beacons, but he also had some gizmos that recorded data that he's stuck on the wire. And the other the other thing I, I remember that didn't matter how much the instrument at the end of the cable weighed, the the all the dynamics are controlled by the drag on the cable. When you have three thousand, four thousand, five thousand meters of cable out, it's the drag on the cable that control the dynamics, not the weight of the little vehicle at the end. Yeah. Okay, we have There's reached cliff, the wall. Ooh, That's back it. up, Herc, back up. Ah. Right Overhanging. Right away with a yeah. critter Maybe. with street in you. Can't tell. Yeah, it looks like a <clears throat> dying sediment-covered sponge there. So maybe well, not keep an eye on that spot. sonar. We might yeah, yeah, swing yeah. in and get a little. Yeah, I, you've been st I, the ship's been stopped for a bit, so I don't think you're going to get too much closer, but right I'll keep an eye on it. Beauty. Yeah, I tried measuring the position from our last settled position, so hopefully it stops right at about there. Perfect. 20 meters, less than 20 meters. Good view of her because it comes up. Nice view on the triclops. Yeah, 
hands. Quite the red wall of death there on the sonars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was very tall. And this isn't the biggest. Actually, let's see. We, we, have a, we have a much bigger one as we... Uh, no, as I think we this was the oh. biggest, wasn't it? So no, no, I think as we get if we, as we move to waypoint six, we have a uh, you know really the our our plan is to come straight up here, is it, or do some? I don't know. No, I think I think our, our goal was to kind of zigzag up and down okay. as right we move right. up. Uh, we have a question from Waipahu High School. I that sounds familiar. I think maybe we Danielle has been doing interactions with them. Uh, how much of the ocean floor have you mapped so far? Well, the question is, what does you mean there? I can tell you that globally, only about 25% of the seafloor has been mapped uh, with the kind of uh, modern tools that we have on this ship, uh, what we call multi-beam sonar. So 75%. I'm still coming up, FYI. That's yeah, I close. think that's uh, probably prudent. 75% of the ocean uh, has uh, You might start getting close mapped. to the... You can uh, come up a little faster and see if you can peek over. Yeah, Otherwise I know. We'll I think there was the a bit back. of an overhang on the... There yeah, was, yeah. This may be the steepest part of the wall. There, that's getting a little farther yeah, away from me. Yeah, you. sir. Yeah, I'm seeing that in her uh, or in your light as well, so I think we're good. Okay, so here. And that 25% uh, that has changed quite a bit over the last six, seven years. In 2017, before a project called Seabed 2030, which is a project whose goal it is to see the global ocean completely mapped by the year 2030, before that project started in 2017, only 6% of the ocean was mapped. We have two interesting things here. One, a predatory event. How does a oh, sea star get on the side of a cliff to feed on coral? And the other one's a crack in that rock there. Yep. And, yeah. and the thing is, it looks like it's really overhanging. I mean, yeah, indeed, overhanging. A little tap there might uh, <laughs> <laughs> be an ultimate predatory event. A little <laughs> more than Hercules bargained for. Yeah. So between 2017 and 2023, we've moved from 6% of the ocean mapped to uh, 25 percent that's really tremendous but sadly that's mostly from finding data sets that people had collected but hadn't made available so that was the big leap and now we're faced with uh, really trying to do that other 75 percent yeah the goal is to reach that by 2030 right see by 2030 yeah, the goal the goal it's a very ambitious goal very <laughs> we, can, we can we do can keep it. We striving have the, for it we have the technology to do it uh, it's just a question of the. It's all hands. The fiscal right. will. So Larry, I'm taking a look. At, take a look at the high pack screen here. Yep. So this is the cliff that we're thinking that we want to. Right. Map. Do you think that this is it? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think uh, that this yeah. might just be over smooth. Yep. Uh, no, I agree. Yeah, I, I think, think we're on it. Yeah. No, I absolutely. Uh, uh, all right. So I, do you want to? Uh, how do we want to? Well, I, I think this is a Jonathan call. Where's, where did Jonathan just run out here? He'll be back in a minute. But uh, I think the at least what uh, I'd heard from Jason is that once we get to the cliff, then we're going to go up and down. And uh, and it's really what Jonathan wants to, wants okay. to see from it. Yeah, because it doesn't look like there's anything interesting up on top. This kind of map in this little protrusion here and then yeah. I'll slide over to the right. You're probably at the end of your tether if you're getting dragged around. Oh uh, yeah, you can come down. Yeah. We know we're safest, so. Chris, are we at the midpoint of this uh, canyon, or where are uh, we? I think we're, I think we're on the western wall of this canyon. So I think we're going to start, we're going to start heading um, south now, and keep in, in along this wall. I, I believe that's the plan. Their back so. row's working it out right now. And heading south would mean moving towards the island. That's correct. Yeah. 
yeah, so we're kind of on the canyon wall and we're going to follow it up. I believe that's the plan. And the water will get shallower as we approach the island and the end of the canyon? Yes. What about this feature here? Is that as uh, wicked as it looks? Or? I think it's just more of the same. I think it was just an occlusion. Oh, okay. Right, because th this is the track that we went. Right. So yeah, it just got blocked by, it's the same thing. I yes, Chris, when you zoomed out, um, yes. do, you, do you have the waypoints? The I do, yeah. Yeah, I think if we see that, you'll see exactly Yeah, so the waypoints fo follow along basically this, that, this edge cliff. that we're on, right, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. I think the cliff is actually right here. Exa yeah, exa uh, well, I, the, the, I, waypoints, I, the waypoint six. Well, yeah. That's, yeah. All right. I yeah, know. the waypoints are yeah. along the are right. along the cliff. But but we're we're, <laughs> start, we're starting to see it, and at least from what we've seen, uh, this section here that we're that. at now, which is probably by waypoint uh, Danger Will Robinson three, I would think. <laughs> I'm just uh, doing one final pass here to get yeah. the sand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're, come back we're, up. Um, Should have enough. Th that's enough a little steep section, it. and then it's really that by waypoint between four and five, I think, was the steepest part. But yes. Yeah, there you can see it there. Yeah. And so the idea was to follow this along. So we just want to, all right, so follow, we, uh, follow uh, the cliff along. Right, until we come to waypoint five. All and, right. And then we climb up. We can do that. But we should, we should take an excursion up and down every once in a while. Yeah. I just, uh, for the logs here, I just kind of covered left right up and down this little feature where we came in it's kind of a little sticky outy bit so should be an interesting little mini model did that turn out to be an overhang was there an overhang there at all? Or just oh yeah, definitely overhang. Looked like it was. Yeah, if you look, uh, looking down in our uh, cinema camera there, that one yeah. up above. I don't know if you can get a sense yeah. from that angle there, but. Glad you backed up. Yeah. We have a question about how hot do uh, hydrothermal vents get? 400 C yeah. before the temperature probe melts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Cooked all a few of over there. And people have to wonder why isn't the water boiling at that temperature? It's a good question. Phase separation. Yeah. It's because the pressure. Nature's pressure cooker. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a giant pressure cooker down there. So you can it's like a deep fryer down there. It's oh, there's the sea star on a cliff again. I was just going to ask, is that the same one or is it just... What's that? That's not the same one, is it? Yeah. Oh, it is. It is. Okay. It is. I, I just did all up and down, lefty-righty on this little loop -de -loop. bit here. Now it is... We need Jonathan here to... Tell us whether he wants to film this or not. He should be filming. I don't see any action, but I don't know. It's well, just the KVM I, connection on the screen. So if he's not, I did a lot of <laughs> exactly <laughs> practice. Um, <laughs> where did uh, he's he's so in the studio, but now here. he's gone. Yeah, I thought he was coming back. Let me see um, if somebody's in the lounge and sees Jonathan, I'll go s see if I can. Um, oh. Thanks, John. Are you going off to my other side much? Or? Yeah, I'm going to come uh, to the left in front of you. I think we're okay. going to head south here. Okay. Another predator. Yeah. <laughs> Get some white. Just, uh... Oh, I think two predatory tunicates there? Tunicate. Is there okay. two? I, th I thought I saw one underneath a rock on, yeah, the, it's it's on the, the right. It's off to the right. Is it off to the right, too? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Wow. Those are really interesting. Those looking. are really cool. Yeah. Looks like a little primnoid fan down there with a the squat uh, lobster. You want to step Bri away yeah, just I'm a just few meters just there? Just about ready to do that. Uh, bridge uh, nav, 10 meters, 135. Or, yeah, 135. That'll work. Our tethers just a bit close mm -hmm. together here. I can, uh, I can. That'll start. I can start to the bridge. south, but.
It tends to do the twist when we get it like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If I move away, it should uh, help turn the disruptors off here. <laughs> That's a little close to me on this side. Yeah, let's let's come up there. Okay. We'll come up and I'll ride the ridge. Uh, that way you'll be more comfortable. All right, Dan and Chris. Yeah, so, so Jonathan's up here and he said, yeah, he'd just like this to kind of zigzag up and down the wall as we move further south um, and if we find something spectacular in terms of either carls or columnar basalts uh, then we'll stop and prosecute it and he'll come and change the change the filming style yep right. and the lighting looks fantastic dan you were recording for when we first came in there right Yep. So we did a little uppy downy lefty righty bit there. Yep. Um, and I think um, if you can continue to make sure that you see the entire base as you're going down, yep. um, that, that's very helpful to make the model cohesive. So you always want to touch base. Touch base, show me some sand, go back up. All right. Love that sand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just down in the data lab too, so. Roger. We know where to find you. So we're going to ride the ridge here for a while until we get Atalanta a little more, uh, just a little more standoff. Like solitary hydroid up there. Oh, look at this guy. And a fly track enemy. me. So what's the difference between this one and the one that was on the coral? Is it just yeah, the, the one on the coral, so I think the reason why it was on top of that coral is because it doesn't have this kind of stalk to um, make it higher up in the water column. They're definitely two different types of fly trap enemies. So. Yeah. So yeah, this is an example of one that closed. It looks very similar to a flytrap. I thought it was still trap. open. I see the, the Sorry, nav is all over the place there. right now, just so you know. Oh yeah, it is still yeah, partially well, open. All bits are off at the moment. No DVL lock. No DVL lock and the USBL is spraying everywhere. Roger. I don't think teeth is the right word, but... I have to rely on <laughs> our old school so sweeping like yeah. sonars. Is there a reason why we're seeing more of the uh, sea lily crinoids here as opposed to the, you know, like the thousands we were seeing at the columnar basalts? Yeah, I think uh, it could be due to like sedimentation. I think it's more advantageous to be higher up and away from the bottom of these rocks. Bridge now, um, 10 meters, 090. Yeah, I'm not too sure why that distribution um, is, is so different of uh, the different types of species. Gotcha. But it's important to note. Affirmative. It, could it also be tailoring because of the absence of, uh, you know, food and nourishment? The, there's not much of a current. There doesn't seem to be hardly any current in here to carry food to these um, to these animals, as we saw yesterday on the old coral reef cliff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we were looking at uh, the columnar basalts and um, those interesting what we thought were dike formations, but were sills. Um, they were aligning the edges because they, they were able to get into the water column in those currents. Um, but here, yeah, there doesn't seem to be much current, right, Dan? No, does not. Um, yeah, in the absence of a current and uh, or in the absence of food and nourishment, you're not going to see many creatures. And there's not many hiding places, and that coral reef has was full of holes. Can, uh, can, let's, let's come up and just see where the... Uh, how high you got to go to get a clear view there. So we know where we have to run away since we're going to be here for a while. I'll come back towards it's here a bit. clear there. Yeah. So what's that? That's uh, 50, 57 meters. Yeah, 10 meters above me. I'm uh, possibly 60 meters up there, 50, 60 meters, something like that.
Chris, can you zoom out on the high-back survey? Uh, yeah. There you go. I'll come uh, try and get in front of me yeah. again. And Larry, we're appear to be seeing some of those stratified layers you were describing earlier. Yeah, we're yeah. Uh, we have a nice compliment. It says, great job to everyone in the control room today making ops look graceful and easy when it's actually really hard. And good to hear Chairman Colberson standing watch this evening, a consistent supporter of ocean exploration funding for many years in the House Appropriations Committee. Uh, we need more ocean champions like him today. Thank you very much. That means a lot. Yeah, it's been a real treat having you here, John, learning a lot from you and Really enjoy having you on our watches. It's a, it, truly my privilege. This is my seventh expedition I've discovered in uh, all the years I've known Bob Ballard and, and all of you. It, uh, I learned so much and apply it directly to um, helping yeah, Noah Yeah, try and coming down well, see how it looks. I'm gonna reset your DVL here. I think we're dialed again. There we go. Yeah, yeah you got one beam. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. You know what? It doesn't. How about we just do? It's, yeah. USBL. So. Um, Chris backed up a little, so we should that be able to. That seems better. Yeah. That's good. That's a nice distance there, I yeah. think. Um, a nice uh, delta. Okay. So. This is a, a relicanth, uh, an enemy. Let's see what the full scientific name is for this. Toy. <laughs> Can tickle the uh, cinema camera with the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, it can only do that on the ones that are sticking out a meter or so, right? Kellyanne? Uh, it's an actinaria. An enemy. Actinaria. It's just, it, yeah. it's just what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have those uh, streamers that the, the relicanth today to have, the really thin long tentacles streaming out from the tips of their the tentacles that we saw here. All right. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a step south so we can keep yes, please. Yep. Keep this thing moving. Keep that moving. Get me on. I'm going to be back in my own dust five, five here. One, six, five. Affirmative bridge. You want me to come down with you? Sure. I come down a little. We're actually stretched out now because I'm under the overhang. Yeah. Peek in there. Peek in there. Could be a cup coral. <laughs> 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 yeah, there is. Little, little tiny one. I want to see this going deep in. Uh, Roger. Deploy my 
manipulator light. <laughs> the cinema cam is kind of stuffed into the hole there. So. The upper one? Yep, yep. Yeah. What do you think those dark filaments are on the top, uh, on the underside of those rocks? It's kind of on the underside of that. You see those dark areas? It appears to be some kind of filament, isn't it? Is it? I'm not sure. I see where you are. The black, the black, the dark uh, area that's deposited on those rocks. Is that uh, pro perhaps a magnesium or rare earth precipitating out of the seawater, Larry? Ab above that crack, you see below the crack, it's kind of a yellowish white, and then above it, it's dark, much darker. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's the case here, but. It always could be, but I, I, I think this is just sediment that's that's falling as opposed to precipitate. I see. I think the sediment mostly, falling on, yeah. mostly because of the setting. I, I don't think we're in a, a place where where we really should have that kind of circulation. But the ocean is full of surprises, and uh, many times I've been proven wrong. <laughs> so you need some kind of circulation for the. Uh, well, if, if for for a hydrothermal type precipitate, uh, you, know, you, you need a source of heat and, and water circulation. And but for the um, like magnesium and well, for just a general precipitation out rare out, yeah. out out of no no you, no you don't need for that but um, that would be uniform. In uh huh. Like like spray paint is. Like Bob always says, yeah. yeah. Smectite, yeah. Bob's favorite word is smectite. What is that? Smectite is a, is a degradation uh, product of, from the glass. Uh, it's it's like a very low, what we call low temperature metamorphism. It, it, the, the glass is unstable and it changes chemically and it changes to things like pelagonite, bridge, smectite, bridge all these one, meters, one, big zero. words or silly words that are made up for... You can just call it a kind of clay-like material. <laughs> um, we have a question. Is this the first time humans have seen uh, these rocks? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, I suspect uh, these very ones, yes. There have been some Pisces dives in this general region, but uh, that is kind of a, an amazing thing about almost every place that Hercules looks. Uh, probably no human has, has seen that before because so little of the ocean has been explored. Even with Hercules, we can w wander around for hours and over the same 30 by 30 meter patch and still uh, go right by things. And this is why it's important to have hundreds of eyes on it instead of just a few in the control van here. Constantly, folks are sending in things that they see that we're missing. And yeah, yesterday was a great example. And this is a black coral here. I think this is Trisopathies. Um, I'm not familiar with this type of black coral, but it's definitely a black coral. Um, I don't think it's Lilopathies. It's a little farther and more sparse branch, but let me keep looking at my ID guide here. Um, and somebody asked, uh, what will be the final resolution of the photogrammetry? How close will we be able to zoom? I feel like Jonathan said something about a centimeter. Yeah, so yesterday we made a model of the large uh, Paracalyptrophora fans, the really pretty pink ones, and we could pretty much zoom in and see each individual branch. Um, really? Not down to each individual polyp, but you could still see the texture pretty closely. It was pretty phenomenal. So wow, I need to go to the data lab and look at that. <laughs> yeah, so if yeah, we were able too. to get good imagery pretty close, um, yeah, you can get some really high resolution detail there. It's quite remarkable. Somebody spotted a squat lobster. Yeah, on the black coral, I think. There might have been another one, too. That was a big squat lobster in the black coral. These guys are always fun. Is anybody home? Okay, so Dan, as we move a little further south, it's likely that we'll uh, come to a place with an overhang. Yeah. We have the big occlusion zone there. 
So that might be uh, really interesting. Maybe you want to back off a little and, and... It's definitely overhanging there on yeah. the bottom already. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice to take a little excursion. Yeah. I, I don't I don't want to say under the overhang, but... Uh, oh, totally. In front of the overhang. Just it's waiting for uh, Atlanta to get down there a little so it can uh, kind of light our path. I'm out in front of it now. I have it dropped down. Uh, last time I dropped down, it's about 15 meters back to the north there. Yep. So. Okay, that sounds good. Chris, could you zoom out on the um, high-pack survey, please, for a moment? Yep. Just get a context. And this is a another Sacocalyx sponge. Okay. So we still have quite a way we really zoom out and we see how far away point six is, we may never get there. Oh, good. Yeah, it, good it's, it's going to uh, be slow moving at this rate. Yeah, You can uh, keep it moving, Chris. Yeah. Roger. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Bridge nav, 2-5-1-8-0. Okay, uh, we zigged and now we're going to... 25180. Zag back to the north down the wall. I'll come right. Right, right in front of Atlanta there. Okay. Yeah, so, so far on this dive, we've been seeing some uh, black corals, some bathypathies, and uh, potentially trisopathies. That's what I'm going with Come right now. Come uh, look to your right. Just light up the uh, overhang there for us. We got a... Also our ice cream sandwich again. Um, yeah. Been seeing some Chrysogorgia, the this bottle is, brush. This is the overhang then here. Yeah. Well, uh... Adelant is about perpendicular to us now, so... Yeah, you can come down a bit more and light it up. Okay. Give the folks an idea of the overhang as we slide under it here. We've also been seeing some corallids or hemichrallium uh, coral fans, the pink uh, branching corals, different uh, foraeid sponges, the psychocalyx sponges, or whatever. some walteria sponges, um, bamboo coral whips, primnoids. Been seeing quite a diversity of life, but in low density, kind of sparse, mixed throughout. Yeah, I was going to say that this is definitely more diversity than I was expecting. Yeah, it's yeah, been pretty it's pleasant. A, yeah, nice surprise. I think my favorite is the benthic tunicates that we've been seeing, the predatory yes, ones. Those same, are pretty cool. Yeah. Same. <laughs> I just like how the, the sea lilies like break up the scene. It's just Yeah. Like you said the sea lilies? Yeah. Yeah. They're so bright red. Yeah, just like a big pow. Yeah. yeah. You think shrimp, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how bright the red coloration is. Especially this deep. Yeah. Good work over there. <laughs> All the, the yeah. balancing and the, the iris, the colors, the focus. And I think Manel's mom is watching always, right? <laughs> I don't know if she's watching today, but she does usually watch. I don't know if my mom's watching. Or my dad. Got some proud families. <laughs> Oh, it's like we spoke it into existence. There's oh, yeah. There's <laughs> oh, two. Yeah. There's one off to the right there as well. I'm sure my parents are also using the tuning in to make sure that I'm still alive out here. 
You are well fed and uh, oh, taken yeah. care of. <laughs> Even with the cookies that John brought us. I yeah. know, right? <laughs> I tried to resist. I resisted them the first time and then what? said, are you sure? <laughs> I'm always very pleased by the meals on the ship. Uh, we have uh, questions for the ROV pilots. I'm guessing that there must be gauges that tell you in the ROV that you are too close or you have overhang over the ROV. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, we have... Uh, four sonars on uh, three on Herc, one on Atalanta, and uh, I've lost count of how many cameras are on these vehicles now. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, let's see, uh, three, four on Atalanta, and uh, yeah, quite a few on Herc. There's uh, one, two, three, four high definition cameras up front at the moment, but. Uh, for the closest up stuff, it's um, visual, so we use Atlanta to uh, give a general idea. The second ROV, or the eye in the sky, but other than that, it's uh, just poking around with Hercules and seeing what's in front of us. We have gotten into a situation before, uh, Rennie and I were <laughs> in big trouble, uh, where we couldn't come up with Atalanta. We actually had to go down because we had the cable too close to an overhanging, big overhanging structure. And we could tell, we knew the cable was up against the wall because uh, there was particles raining down in Atalanta's camera, kind of like when we were hung up the other night with the rope, we saw particles should never see an Atlantis camera so and we had to pay out come back down and move the ship away uh, somebody commented these stocked crinoids come from lineages that are so old long existing echinoderm critters um, that reminds me like we were talking about some corals right that were like 4,000 years old I think it was corals it was a uh, yes. That's what Megan yeah. told us yesterday. Is the yeah. corals that uh, we were seeing were four thousand years old, and I commented they were not unlike the brittle cone pines in the western United States, which are among the oldest living organisms on Earth. Yeah, it makes you wonder. Like the world looked so different back then, you know, when they were first, you know, growing four thousand years ago. Um, and they've, they're sticking around. So yeah, so somebody else was asking, how old are these coral fans? Um, I don't know if Megan is still available as a resource today or not, but I know she pointed out there were some other corals who could have been as old as 10 to 12,000 years. Yeah, it's, yeah, there was, there was a discussion yesterday about how they determine uh, the age of corals and, and uh, you can keep moving Chris I'm just okay trying to get some stereo photogrammetry of the overhang there it's pre nav two zero because it's not it doesn't seem to be as easy as like you know rings on a tree dusted it yeah. up now so it's it, time it, to it, go it, I think they, they rely two on zero one eight zero the isotopes right yeah thickness of the stem isotopes mm -hmm. they yeah. have a lot of different ways to to measure but it is more much more difficult to determine the age of a coral that it is a tree. Yeah. Uh, so, someone's asking, is the fisheye lens a feature you're going to keep or just a temporary piece that needs to be returned or just not needed anymore? About my pay grade. <laughs> yeah. So, I feel like... Um, I was talking to Jonathan about this, but there wasn't really like a straight answer. I guess ideally, uh, he was kind of talking about like that. Yeah, that would be cool to do, but it's just so much data. I mean, yesterday it was it took like what 12, 13 hours to download all that data, and they were icing the the camera because it was so hot. 
But if it was up to me, I would uh, not to make light of uh, what we're doing with the models and all that. But for me, it's, you know, just a window to look out of. Oh, what is that? I could say it wouldn't be true, but I could say, you know, the important part to me is not the photogrammetry or the models or the video. It's the fact that the, ROV, the cameras on the ROV and the spatial awareness that it gives the operators is just having them on there is worth it for me. I'm really impressed with these fisheye views because they're, they're, they're really giving us a perspective that we just haven't had before. Yeah, 100%. I know what's above me and below me right now, and I wouldn't have that. The other, usually I would have only the Zeus camera and that camera right there, the what's known as our bubble camera, which is a D1 resolution, 1990s um, security camera, a very high-end security camera for in, in, in the, uh, you know, when it was specified and installed in the Titan housings by Insight Pacific. That was, that was the, that was the bomb back then, but you know, it was 20 years ago. I think we've we've got to pick up and see so much more with these cameras on with the uh, the wide you know the increased spatial awareness like knowing that this is just above me right now when I'm usually looking down it's just phenomenal from an operator standpoint yeah this is pretty spectacular too again we're seeing these kind of layered ashes yes and some more thick basalt flows, but that, that interspersion of the of the ashes and the flows is very, very common as you walk around any volcanic terrain, that you, you'll get a flow, a lava flow, then ash, and a lava flow, and ash. How, how can you tell it's ash? You see the, the little, the very thin layers like that? All right. Yeah, the, so the, the, that's the ash, which is falling out of the air, basically. And very fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and then coarser material above, and then a lava, another lava flow with the darkest stuff. The ash is lighter in color, Larry, and the ready for another move down. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yep. Free H, free H nav, two zero one eight zero. Yeah, I'm gonna come up a bit to give us a better representation of that overhang. Uh, I'm stretched out at the moment. All right. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. What is that? Zig zag? No, zig zag. I'm gonna zig. Alright. <laughs> I'm gonna come to the right. All Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is that a nice? No, I'm good. Yeah, thanks. Larry, when you describe these ash layers, uh, it to, it to me looks a lot like what we see in the city of Pompeii uh, outside of Naples. It was buried by uh, the volcano Vesuvius. Those ash layers, a similar color massive ash deposits and covered and buried the entire city. Yeah, well, yeah, it, the, the more catastrophic the eruption, the, the more of that kind of ash is going to be uh, produced in right. new AI dumps. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Bob, Bob is here asking about the name of, there's a, a, a flow, it's almost like a debris flow, but of, of a super hot ash, and I think it's called a new AR dump. And it can kill. Right. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very, very fast flowing. Super hot. Mm -hmm. I am, uh, if I'm new, moving new too. Dot, I think. If I'm moving too fast for you, Larry, let me know. I'm just trying to cover the, do the zigzag here on the, on the layer cake. Uh, viewers asking if that's the the same as a lahar flow. Uh, New Aydan is a turbulent, fast-moving cloud of hot gas and ash erupted from a volcano. Uh, what's it called again, Larry? New A Ardant. N U E E Ardant. A R D E N T E. Right. 
I, I, don't. I think I remember reading about one of those that hit a Caribbean island in uh, sometime in the last 100, 150 years, and the only survivor was a it wiped out an entire city, and the only survivor was a guy that was a prisoner in the jail. Yes, I think I do, but I, I, that might have been a mud flow, but uh, yeah, and, and it's fr the, in French it means glowing cloud. Right, that's it. Super hot. It was turned by. Very it was coined by a French geologist observing the eruption of Mount Pele on the island of Martinique in 1902. That is the one I'm thinking about. I think that's right. The more general term is a, is a pyroclastic flow. That's it. Pyroclastic flow. Yeah. That's the term I remember. And Bob is pointing out that uh, a couple of uh, of geologists, uh, the crafts, uh, volcanologists, were killed by a, a pyroclastic flow like this. In, in Japan, in 1991. Bridge uh, nav two zero one eight zero. A, a viewer is asking about um, like the the Vesuvius eruptions compared to these Hawaiian ones. Um, they're saying that the Hawaiian chains are very unlikely to have very explosive eruptions, um, but if groundwater interacts with the basalt lava, there can be uh, rapid steam eruptions, forming uh, mar volcanoes. This ash is more likely to have been from airfall, less likely to be from no way are Dante. Oh, yes. yeah. No, I, I, I wasn't implying that what we're seeing here are New Way Ardon. So it was a side discussion about these very dangerous pyroclastic flows. You're absolutely right. They're here, here, mostly around here, we get just much more benign ash falls and much less, much less uh, catastrophic eruptions. And, and very slow moving magma. Right. Fortunately. And uh, a viewer was asking about a lahar, but a lahar is a hot or cold mixture of water and rock fragments that flows down the slopes of a volcano and typically enters a river valley. Perhaps as we saw in Mount St. Helens and, and some of the volcanoes in the uh, Philippines, there's some famous footage of. Hmm. You're dragging me a bit. Yeah, I'm coming back to the south now. Okay. Larry, I have a question that's only like tangentially related, but I know that, uh, if I'm correct, black sand beaches are caused by volcanic rock, if I'm correct. I well, might not be. Yeah, well, a beach is formed by whatever there is to make a beach out of. So, so the waves. Rivers carry material and waves erode the cliffs and whatever is there is going to make a beach. So if you have basalt mm -hmm. as your basis, um, you're going to have black beaches. If you have oh. a lot of green olivine, you'll have there are places where there are green beaches. Gotcha. There's a remarkable beach uh, off, uh, I think, Fort Ord in California where there was a, a major dump site offshore. And the beach is made up almost completely of tin cans, of wow. old, old cans, because that was the material that the waves were reworking and they formed it into a beach. So when you have corals, as we have many places, we have beautiful white sand beaches. Um, and it's usually the, the most um, stable of the materials that, that stays. And so on the East Coast, where we have the sandy beaches, the quartz sand beaches, it's the breakdown of the granites and things like that that leave eventually the quartz, uh, and that's what forms the beaches there. So a, a beach will be made up whatever the source material you have available is. Hmm. Interesting. Thanks for that answer. So clear, it's a ghost. <laughs> a slow guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's your jet. Yeah, J yeah. John mentioned that. Yeah, Bob found John the uh, story of the prisoner. It was the same eruption, Mount Pele. In Martinique. Yeah. The, and, and oh, there's and, Bob. Yeah, and it was Bob just was joining us. This just, terrific. Just that prisoner that survived. Oh, well, your microphone's not on. I, yeah, turn your microphone. You're not on, on SPL. Well. 
There you, there you go. Yeah, it was in May of 1902. He, the only survivor of the Mount Paley eruption was a person in, who was in prison, who was survived because uh, he uh, was uh, in a cell. Yeah, the, the criminal's the only one that made it out alive. Yeah. <laughs> Bob, in all your years of exploration, have you ever uh, explored or uh, a underwater uh, volcanic Let's flow? Get a little closer. Some of the work time. that you've done. Uh, well, I've spent. I mean, for example, in I've cities. explored hundreds and hundreds of underwater yeah, volcanoes. I mean, any of them involving cities or shipwrecks or. Three H region F one five two. Well, the, the, you know the ones that are the fascinating are the ones that when the lava goes here in Hawaii off the Big Island, yeah. you can. You can't approach the flow, no, but what can happen is you get implosive events, and it can really hurt your ears. Yeah, get exploded. It'll, it's ex you know when the pillow lavas are popping and and imploding. That if you're near them, it just it's like a hand grenade going off mm -hmm. in the water. And, and Bob, if I could also ask about one other thing I think is interesting about the geology of the Hawaiian Islands. We talked about this uh, the mm -hmm. other day. Are these massive landslides that have occurred underwater? Could could you? Well, that's about very that? common. I mean, the landslides are how well they call them turbidity currents. They have the famous ones are the ones off Newfoundland uh, uh, where they snap the transatlantic the cables, and What's they that? sequentially snap. They could determine the landslide was, was going, going on 100 miles an hour. Yeah, I, I mean, you don't know, but that's how. Sediments, a lot of sediments Sorry, get to the deep you. sea through these yeah. underwater landslides. Yeah, yeah, that was very it, common. It was it was very interesting because people were just theorizing about these things that Bob mentioned, okay. turbidity I'll currents, density flows, that, that a mixture of sediment and water, even in the deep sea, is more dense than the water surrounding it. So if there's a slope, yes, it will actually go downhill. And so there was lots of theory about it, but obviously nobody had ever seen anything like it. And then suddenly it was in 1929? Yeah, 1929. There was an earthquake in Newfoundland. Yeah. And then right after the earthquake in Newfoundland, one by one, the cables the, snapped. The telegraph cables that were across the Atlantic yeah. snapped. And they could calculate they the speed. They, fi they realized uh, that the, yeah. the earthquake itself right. um, triggered in a canyon much like this, a canyon called much larger, but. but um, Laurentian Channel. Laurent was yeah, the, La the Laurentian oh, Channel. Yeah. It it triggered a turbidity current in that channel, and the cables went across it. And they, uh, as Bob said, they calculated the speed of, of you know, over 100 miles an hour of this. Well, and also the sudden uh, removal of the sediments well, I, I, I uh, triggered triggered uh, a release of methane yep, and that led to big. Uh, uh, huge gravel clam, waves. clam beds, right. remember? Well, yeah. Because oh, I, I found yeah, them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, um, so we went on a submersible dive to try to find uh, the evidence of that massive turbidity current. And what was amazing was here's we're looking at something close to columnar basalt here, little mini version of it. It's just a flow with with cooling structure here, that vertical cooling structure. Right. That's um, a Victor Gorgia purple coral. It's the first one we've seen. The, the it is beautiful. Canyon of the Laurentian Channel had what we called the trim line. It had been in 1929. That turbidity current was almost a thousand meters thick, and had actually stripped all the life off the sides and the walls of the canyon. And you could just see a trim line to a thousand meters above the sea floor. And then after that, there was corals and crinoids and things right, growing right. on the walls. And so that's how that's how large that well we saw a similar one uh, when we were in the grenadines investigating a volcano called kickham jenny mm -hmm. and uh in the caribbean a jenny is a, a mule yeah and uh it's uh, a good name they they uh had a massive underwater uh landslide and we found uh a way far away from the volcano itself in the magma chamber we found chemosynthetic life because again the landslide released the overburden of organically rich sediments uh, and it triggered a chemosynthetic life system you can uh, if yep. you walk down in the passageway of the nautilus you'll see a, a 
mosaic of that whole thing and it was quite amazing because the muscles were over a foot in length and they had uh, chemosynthetic bacterium in their bodies and their tissue was had human-like blood all really <laughs> bizarre things that you can run into so you just explore and it's almost guaranteed discovery when you go where no one has ever been and Hot we're leg, fortunate to spend most of our life where no one has ever been and we stumble onto things so at, at, you go looking for a and you find something more important so, B. so at the end of this laurentian fan with a thousand meter turbidity current yeah. was we found and this is comes back to a comment you made the other day john about uh, the catastrophic failure yes um and the the scab lands um, um. formation of giant bed forms these yeah. were giant gravel waves this yeah. is again at, yeah. at 4,000 meters deep Bummer. waves sediment waves but made up of cobbles and gravels so yeah. the, the current was so strong that it could move rocks the size of Volkswagens and mold cobbles and gravels into into big big waves with vent communities we'll play around yeah. or, hy or hy for a minute but it's not, it's not hydrothermal. It's yes. just basically methane, methane-supported uh, clam communities yeah. living in the tops of each one of those. Well, uh, the other waves. day, when w I still haven't figured out when we saw those that first dive when we were on the columnar joints on a sheer wall, we saw a pocket of brachiopods, which are very similar to clams, right. and we recovered one, and it had chemosynthetic. Uh, 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 it was red. It was red. Red, red, red blood in it. With hemoglobin. And we have no idea how it was making eleven, because yeah. it was. We were looking to see if there was a seep. So somebody, and somebody's written. How do you have a seep in a columnar joining? But when yeah. it may have. Yep. Somebody's written and said that I was confusing two beaches, and that is not unusual. Two what? Two beaches. <laughs> <laughs> um, tin can beach is part of Hunting Beach. Oh, I know that tin can beach is full. Of, I. I Grew up in Huntington yeah. Beach. <laughs> you had to walk, be very careful yeah. walking there. And Glass Beach, the one in California, there are multiple Glass Beaches, is up near Fort Bragg. Both are old yeah. dump sites. So, yes, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Tin Can Beach, where people beaches. just threw their stuff for years and years. They finally cleaned it up. But I grew up in Huntington Beach, so I, I knew Tin Can Beach. We used to go there for grunion runs. Yep. yep. That I was a great place. I remember place watching the grunion runs in San Diego. But, but, great but it's, uh, it's runs, certainly yeah. not unusual that I would con confuse uh, two beaches. That's something no. I learned 40 or 50 years ago. Yeah. So. <laughs> so thank you. I've forgotten all yeah. about the grunion runs. It's been yeah. a long time ago. Grunion, that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, at the Cabrillo Aquarium um, in San Pedro, they actually uh, do demonstrations of, of grunion runs. So, yeah, my, uh, my high school class hung out at lifeguard station number three <laughs> and that was where we did i grew up body surfing and the grunions run at full moon or yeah when they get out yeah they come up on a maximum tide and the female goes uh, uh into the into the sand and then the male fertilizes it around it and and then watch out for that cliff yeah it's amazing and thousands and thousands of them come up on the beach and they, is it, it tail You're not allowed to. You have to pick them up with your hand. You're not allowed to use the nets. <laughs> it's like T picking up first, a bar of soap. They, and they, they burrow yes, in tail they, first. A, yeah. a female burrows in tail first. Huh. You can go online and see them grunion runs. They're really a hoot. They're very good to eat, actually. But grabbing them is like grabbing a bar of soap in the shower. They were squirting I'll bet. I'll bet. <laughs> Do you I think do, if I, I uh, that, yeah. think if I pushed on that bit of rock there, it would come loose? Yeah, I'm not Let's sure about that one. All right, back to science don't, don't here. Don't try. I would not mess around with that. <laughs> <laughs> it wants to fall on you. Yeah, it, it wants it, to fall. And I think where we are, there's probably a long week. Do you have a DVL lock on the bottom at all? Or yeah, we do. 13 meters below us. 13 meters below. Is that the bottom or just another ledge? Uh, this, yeah. this was all occluded in the Norbit map. See what what's the now? altimeter underneath? Well, what's our? What's what's? We're your showing altimeter? 13 on Herc and 37 on Atalanta. Yeah. yeah. No, no, Chris can see the bottom pretty well. If you well. push out, you yeah. probably see more. But yeah. No, you you can yeah. see it. There. If you turn sideways a bit, we can see. Oh, look I down forgot slope about with the, We can start look down slope. Yeah. Yeah. So you see the base there. Show, uh, are yeah, you send Norbit out on the on the satellite so people can see we have an 
You have so many displays so here that it's unfair like that you're only getting a few of them. It's a, it is a great image. So there's the nook. Looks like that's uh, 10 meters, yeah, 10 meters yeah. down. Yeah. So, so, the can so, so the DBL is, is seeing the bottom. This canyon is about 10 meters deep. Well, from, where, from where, where we are. are. From yeah, where right here. We, don't, right here. We, haven't, we haven't got a view on the top here, yet. where we are, yeah. Yeah, we're at 1,440 meters. So I'm going to, uh, are we still moving? Yeah, we are. Well, there, can people see, can people see that Norbit image can, rotate? Yeah, we need to get video to send it out. Can you send out the Norbit video? Is there anyone there? I'm going to try and, uh, can you show me the craft on bubble cam? Yeah. I'm going to try and swing the minibee later out and get some light and see if we can get some light underneath this overhang here and uh, light it up so the stereo camera can record it. We that should. would be cool. So right now it's... Take, uh, you take advantage of the light that's on the arm? Yeah, Roger. Uh, hey, this is Jonathan down in the lounge. Have you seen something for the stereo cam or just for... Uh, Photogrammetry. Dan, did you hear that question? Uh, hold on. Right, just hold on. We're, we're in the of the there we go. We got the Norbit out now. It really gives you an overall picture and very high resolution of where you are. You get some. You can I'm get gonna, so lost in the terrain. Uh, here. If you're listening, Jonathan, I'm going to try and see if the uh, that light on the manipulator will. We have all these different displays like and. Light it up and uh, get some light underneath. I the found that because I'm dyslexic, I can take all of them, Roger. integrate them in my head, and visualize it all. It's very useful. Not all who wander are lost. Um, so we have a question. Yeah, uh, how did you know that those uh, brachiopods had chemosynthetic red blood or symbiotic bacteria? We recovered them. <laughs> <laughs> we have them in the in the wet lab, and we'll be sending them to the people. But when you when you when we put it in the fluid, it just turned blood red. It's pretty hard for a brachiopod to make a living on us, you know, where it was, unless something else is happening. And we noticed it because at the base of the cliff, we saw a Good bunch dead of shells. dead shells, and we said, "There's something up here." And we went up the wall, and there they were in a cluster. Bonk. I'm going to run out of tether here. So I'm gonna Can you come down? I remember when we were diving yep. come down off Ten. Catalina, we saw thousands of them. Never figured out why. Right around right, the corner from the USC's moment, research facility. Where yeah. thousands I'm of just going to do off. one pass here and see if it. All right. I'm trying to poke the stereo camera under there and light it up. Looking up, which is uh, not typical for a science ROV. No, they're, not at all. They're meant to look down. It's getting light under there. Video, you can go back to showing the yeah, fish eye there. It doesn't look. It doesn't look too terrible. We just wanted to see that display. There we go. Thank you. There you go. There's an overhang. Yeah, there, 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 <laughs> there you got it. So I've done a couple passes here and got the rest of it. Maybe the last one here is getting underneath it. I don't know. Starts being a yeah. This is this will actually be very interesting on the well, more, had that more than an overhang. It's not just a horizontal overhang. This is whoever had that idea of putting a light on a manipulator. That was that's, that's all right. It's it seems to be working out. <laughs> a permanent feature to our arsenal, maybe. <laughs> so quite a map okay. that we're that's evolving with I this. Got stuff in my sonar. Yeah, I'm dragging in. You got stuff in your son. Ooh, you're getting close. Uh, that's fun. <laughs> The yeah, fun is yeah, when right. you fuse the bathymetry with the photography okay. and you come up quite a three dimensional uh, you can picture. Count down another six. Let me give me enough to turn around that's here. The, okay. That's Look the at that. I think Jonathan's done some of that already. And hopefully we do a lot more. Yeah, my goal for this particular rock climb is going to be to essentially just uh, follow the path and create a model of of everywhere that ROV Hercules explored, this little zigzag as we investigated this incredible wall. Thank you. You're muted.
That same rock. Gosh, I don't want to push on it. <laughs> uh, if you can look, look, but don't touch, right? Yeah, I'll do that. There you are. The little teenager in me coming out. Oh, that's, 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 that's very cool. I think we've okay, got a wrap from that. Come on at you. Okay. We went to seeing those carls, too. Want to come up? They're all on the underside. Uh, sure. I have real estate. Look at that, see? So the carls are hanging out all in the... You're, you're all right. The edge of the overhang. Oh, on the, on the underside where you Yeah, you'll have to there. come up as I come closer to you. Yeah. There must be a better current down there. Uh, come up nice and easy so you don't pull on me. Um, Sony's asking about uh, rock samples. No, what we're not really collecting samples uh, on this expedition. Uh, we did collect a f some rocks a couple of days ago, but we're really here to get uh, video footage. This footage is being shot with a revolutionary new camera. Jonathan, who's been joining us from time to time, is designed, put together to allow not just high resolution IMAX uh -huh. quality film uh, close. projection, but uh, it could be uh, used for immersive technology to allow you using your phone or a, a computer to step into and see as though you are in the middle of this canyon, as you're in the in the uh, standing next to a coral reef, and uh, and project it even into, for example, the new sphere in Las Vegas, which is going to have it, just like IMAX on steroids. And, and this level of high quality, high resolution imaging has not ever been done before. And, once again, being done for the first time on the Nautilus, so along with so many other firsts. You, uh, oh, you show me the crap there. I can you see it. To, yeah, uh, you got oh, it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. I can't get the light. Um, so somebody uh, is asking for a quick summary on what it is that we're doing and looking at. I am. Uh, Letting it all hang out right here. <laughs> <I'm over>. <laughs> <laughs> There's your summary. <laughs> so we have the manipulator sticking out, the camera sticking out. I'm trying to get a light underneath the <laughs> overhang. All right, let's let Dan, uh, let's let Dan uh, do his dangerous uh, deed here, and then I'll I'll take a step back and tell it, tell you where we are and and what we're doing. I wish we would have put the light on a few more joints out so I could angle it up. I, I had assumed it was in the hand. And then you can turn it in any direction you want. Yeah, that would have been uh, a little more risky because the cable management of the light is... Mm -hmm. I'm just going to try one pass here and see if we're getting anything. Close, touching. I don't know if I'm getting it there, Jonathan. It's going to be still dark. It's not as dark as it was last time. But I've dusted it up now, so. Herc was originally designed for archaeology to press up 
against the ship's hull. Now you're dragging me. I am, yeah. Okay, I'm done. That's about the end of the run there. Taylor Ann, what's that little guy we see there? Uh, can you come down five? No, it's see if I can get back around yeah. there. Uh, looks like a a pom pom anemone. Pom pom anemone. Appropriate name. And again, uh, oh look at that! Yeah, dan oh. dancing. Oh, that's that's beautiful. High like dancing anemone. <laughs> it's, pro it's, it's probably really enjoying it. It's 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 the current created by the thrusters and. Probably giving a little extra burst of food. Yeah, it has a bit longer tentacles, so it could be actinaria, just a different color morph. Mm -hmm. uh, viewers asking if it could a tap of the ledge bring the whole thing down. Well, it could bring a part of it down. And yeah, that's why we're being very careful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are uh, exploring in uh, what are called the Molokai Canyons. These are canyons on the north slope of Molokai that uh, are old subaerial canyons. These are canyons that were created when this part of uh, the seafloor was above sea level. It's part of the island uh, by the waterfalls and that, we, that you see all over the Hawaiian islands now that are creating canyons on the land. And uh, as Hawaii, uh, okay. as uh, Molokai got, toys put away. Good to go. got cooler and sunk, and as sea level rose, this part uh, became submerged. We're now at about uh, 1,440 there, meters, but I'll come back and, and we started back probably closer me, to uh, 15, to move the boat. 1,550 meters, so you've Roger. come up uh, not that much in the last few hours, just 100 meters, but we've come up along the wall of this canyon, and we're seeing bridge, bridge, outcrops of different zero, materials, of basalts, of, of ash deposits. So we saw some stuff that might have been carbonate, um, uh, old uh, coral reef components. So we're basically seeing what you'd see as you walked along a canyon uh, come up a bit, right, on so land. Um, and we're also, we're not seeing as much life as uh, we might have expected. Uh, we're seeing some corals and some an enemy, and we didn't see any crinoids, did we? We've sponges, seen a few sponges we yeah, saw. Yeah, we've seen Can some stalked crinoids, a and uh, I think a couple of, what we got coming up of uh, purple crinoids with some, some yellow coloration in them as well. Um, but mostly we've been seeing those stalked crinoids, the sea lilies. Okay, so that's what we're doing. The question is why we're doing it. And we're doing it because we have on board of Hercules some uh, very new and very special cameras. Um, these cameras are very high definition, and they allow a very wide-angle view. Oops. And uh, our cinematographer, um, I think he he allowed me to call him that, uh, Jonathan Filey, has configured these cameras to allow us to produce uh, three-dimensional images of the features we see. And also, in another mode, they allow um, an immersive experience when they're played back. So we have two different modes for the for the cameras. In, in the mode we're operating now, we're, we're doing the mode for the 3D reconstruction. And so we're particularly hanging out on these uh, large vertical cliffs um, because uh, they should make a spectacular uh, 3D image uh, that uh, Jonathan can then render and allow people to kind of share the experience we're having now. Um, but to do that at home or the science center by interacting with a, a full model 3D. That, and the models are so high resolution that all the little anemone and corals and things like that come crystal clear out. In them. And he's already made some from some of our earlier dyes and I'm sure he's, he's sitting down below processing data right now as we're collecting it. And Larry, people will be able to walk right up in this immersive experience, as though it'll be just as though they're walking up and looking at this wall in detail. Yeah, I, I know Jonathan uh, is, I think, currently uploading one of the the coral fans um, and areas that we saw yesterday um, to, I think, cesium ion. Um, but yeah, we have uploaded some models to Sketchfab where you can put on a virtual reality headset and view it in um, VR and actually kind of uh, just sit there and 
look at the goosefish, I think, is one of the models that we have. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if we have it updated to where, you know, if you turn your head and move, lean in, if you can get closer or not. I think that's something we're still working on, but you can kind of scroll around using the, um, the VR headset to get a closer look at the columnar basalts. Um, so that's the goal is to, when we get these models um, to, their, to their very best, we will upload them so that people can kind of explore on the seafloor with virtual reality. And, and there are multiple purposes to this. Uh, there's the purpose to allow many, many people to have that experience of exploration in a way they couldn't have before. But there's also a strong scientific reason too. Uh, now, now Bridge, the broader science two zero two zero zero. The broader science community can come and 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 basically constantly replay and replay in in, in, in this phenomenal high resolution, and look at all kinds of relationships uh, between organisms and between the substrate that they they just m may never have seen uh, before. So a very good point, Larry. We did uh, and. 2017, we had a 180 camera on the front of uh, Ropos with the lasers and the strobes and the whole nine, and we spent uh, weeks um, running around a uh, caldera and Tonga trench. But all of that footage and all the scientific data that was gathered was uh, intellectual property, so it was never published. Oh General dear. public can't see it. Oh, dear. And we got to look at it while we were on the ship, and it was very cool. You could, it was yeah. like, you know, in the movie of the Titanic standing on the bow, you could look left and right and up and down on some of the, uh, it, it felt like you were standing on the porch of the ROV, and you could look all around instead of just looking forward what through is a that, straw. What is that delicate thing floating yeah. by? Is that a jelly or something? It sort? is. Yeah, Dan, that's one of, certainly one of the nice things about these cruises. Every, everything we do, um, because it's paid by public funds, um, is put into the public domain. So, so there's nothing proprietary about, about anything we collect. Oh, that's really cool. You can see it in the Triclops. Yeah, camera. the Triclops view is great. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the Triclops. Let's see if I can get a little closer there. It's got a, a black background, so it's more striking, eh? Yeah. Um, you can also, uh, on Sketchfab, uh, download the, the 3D printing files of those uh, columnar basalts and, and hopefully some more. Yeah. So if you have access to a 3D printer, you can yeah. print it. The, the, those, what will come out from the printer will be nowhere near the resolution that we can see in the imagery, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah. This is so neat. <laughs> it is very beautiful. Looking up the ID for this. The cinema camera is in photo mode right now, so it's a bit yeah. The, the interesting smooth. Yeah, the, the interesting thing is for Jonathan's photogrammetry, having an organism moving through like this is yeah, probably not. The, <laughs> it's probably not the best thing. He <laughs> he likes things to stay still because he's got to match image to image to image. I don't mind keeping things challenging for him. There you go. Whoa. Oh. Neither does this guy, but he's yeah. hurt, he. He heard us and he said, "I'll I'll get out of the I'll get out of the frame." Oh, got a little too close there. Yeah. Yeah. And right back into the Zeus cam. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. If I take my hands off of the controls, would probably be <laughs> the best thing at this point. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so the question is, is that a crossada? It's in a death spiral. Uh, <laughs> pull up, pull up. <laughs> no, he's recovered before he hit the seabed. Okay. Uh, somebody online made a really good point. Citizen scientists are a real right. thing. Excite them today. Tomorrow they'll be doing it themselves. Bridge, bridge nav, two zero, two one zero. And somebody made a good point that uh, your local library may have a 3D printer. If well, that's, you don't the, have that's one. the one. I was wondering what the one they were referring to. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, the uh, printer. Yeah. I, I thought it was a Crusada. No. <laughs> yeah. That would be cool. <laughs> so, are we going to continue to slide south? Or are we going to go up this at one point? Well, it looks like the, the grand plan? I think. Oh. 
Yeah, I think we're just going south, right? All the way to as many waypoints yeah, as we can get, yeah, right? Yeah, zoom, right. Zoom, zoom right out. I mean, the, the intriguing thing is we're we're back in the old days suddenly of uh, no no mapping coverage underneath there. We're wandering so around in the dark we're, again. We're wandering yeah. around in the dark. How primitive. I, already, I feel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much easier to make the ship moves when I knew it was going to happen hundreds of meters ahead. Like. Yeah. So, so uh, Chris, if you could, if you could uh, zoom out on the... On, uh, High pack survey. Please. Sure. <laughs> so I think we saw this jelly on our on NA one five four. Um yeah. it's a hel okay, that, that's a jelly. Also yeah, I, th I, think you, I think you're doing just fine the way you are. If you just keep heading south. Yeah. We'll be right along the the cliff wall. It's near, also near known the as base. A psychedelic but, uh, jelly. You can always look up at it and and when we Ooh. run out of time we'll hit, go up. I think I think Today we, have, we have a sit in the deep sea. deck time of 8 p.m. I think so. That one's snuck up on me. Bridge, bridge nav. Uh, cancel this move and put in another two zero due south. I don't know if it's worth flying that one with the giant dust cloud. I'm going to make oh. another one here, push it back off uh, the you cliff. Can, you can just wait till you get in clear water. Affirmative bridge, thanks. A viewer saying that that jelly was a target for another expedition if you can collect it. I guess there was an expedition collecting those jellies? Uh, I think it's just something that a scientist had requested from a previous expedition. Uh, but, yeah, we're not going to collect it today. Yeah, we're not really in the, in a place to be collecting things. Or collected a up. pretty good image, though. That counts. Yeah, so. I, tagged, I tagged it. Yeah. And you know what they say, a picture is worth a thousand samples. Yeah, yeah. it is, especially um, at this quality. What is the rarest thing you have seen during this dive in this area? Hmm. I guess in terms of how in uh, quantity, the the least amount of things that uh, uh, the Victor Gorgia or the purple coral. Oh, that's um, yeah, that's true. But I'm not sure if that's actually rare. But from what we've seen so far, we think we've only is observed two. Two? two. Yeah. Two or three of them. Yeah, I, I, I missed the other one, so that, that to me it was the first purple coral I had seen. Yeah, yeah, they're really stunning. Uh, somebody says, it's definitely a new era of science. You can learn so much more from video and streaming than from preserved specimens or static drawings and images. True. Yeah, it's amazing because, yeah, back in the day when we would do science, the only way we would be able to describe to other people what they look like is to either draw them or just give vivid descriptions but yeah. now we have actual imagery down here in the deep sea um, and I, I believe this ha is a specimen that has been collected before so there there are um, uh, genetic studies that have been able to be done on this this specific jelly um, but yeah it's always good to document new sightings of them um, and yeah it was the first and only one we saw so we can try to keep our eyes peeled and see if we see any more yeah it was pretty cool Yeah, it's always really fun to see um, the, the free-swimming jellies. I feel like the, the odds of seeing them is, are so much lower because, you know, they're able to move around in the water column. And yeah. And I'd imagine things swim away when they hear or see uh, the lights of Hercules. Yeah. Close encounter with a uh, <laughs> 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 little too <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, there's a sea star. Oh. Tickled them. I don't know about you, I was looking at the stereo camera the whole time there, watching it brush the upper bumper bar. And and although the information on the jelly that we saw well, is, look at that view down. is lacking, um, we don't want to collect, uh, that's not the, the mission of this expedition to collect samples, it's to Whoa, look at these collect things. images. Look, look at this yes. the, Play around here a, for a minute. If yeah, this, this, this is quite a spot. All right, I'll leave it. Yeah, this, this is a kind of inverted columnar yeah. basalt. Each, each one with a, is it a sponge at the end? Yeah, it is a <laughs> fair day. <laughs> this is cool. And this is hanging up in the air. That's an overhang, right? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like upside down world. <laughs> like stalactites in a cave? Yeah, yeah. This will provide Jonathan with some rather dramatic 3D modeling and uh, imaging. And then on uh, tomorrow's dive, we'll be visiting Japanese submarines from World War II. Then we'll image those with these ultra high resolution cameras that'll create these immersive experiences with uh, for the first time. Are we, are we continuing to head uh, south or towards the island? Yes. In yeah. the canyon, yeah. I see. Canyon's getting a little shallower. We're at 1,437 meters. You come down. Come down, Ted, please. Copy. Come right down, even. Even Delta. See if I can swing around here while I got it in the light. There you go. Roger, thank you. Let's let Adelanta pull it back around. There's a lot of stuff in the water I'm staring up here. You can see the overhang in the sonar. Yeah, I'm trying to get it in the stereo camera there. Well, that, there's a lot of sediment on there. 